All right, so let's dive into AI today. Yeah. And I know you're particularly interested in mm -hmm. AI being used to solve these complex problems. Uh -huh. The ones that have stumped right. even human experts, sometimes for ages. Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned that you're intrigued by this idea. Yes. Of AI that can adapt and refine itself. Yeah. Like it's got this internal coach. Right. Whispering improvements all the time. So so what if we could create an AI that's not just, you know, crunching data, right. but it's actually thinking about its own yeah. performance and breaking down a complex task and okay. breaking it down into smaller steps like links in a chain yeah, okay. and coming up with innovative solutions for each of those steps. Yeah. That's that's kind of the essence of what we're okay. talking about here, a chain of thought. AI. So it's not just about finding an answer. Exactly. It's about right. finding the best answer. It's about exploring the different paths. Right. The different possibilities. Yeah. And ultimately landing on the most effective solution. So giving the AI a sense of agency. Exactly. To choose the best route to get to the best destination. The key to that agency is feedback. Okay. So let's say uh -huh. our AI is working on a, a complex right. engineering challenge, for example. Right. It needs a way to assess its own performance as it's going yeah. to identify potential pitfalls and and adjust its approach right. as needed on the fly. Got it. So like a self-driving car. Exactly. That's monitoring and recalibrating. That's a great analogy. Constantly. Yeah. But wouldn't all that feedback lead to information overload? That's a great question. Yeah. If the AI is constantly bombarded with feedback, how does it prioritize what's important right. without getting bogged down? How does it filter all that? So think about how humans process feedback. Yeah. We don't treat all input equally. Right. We, we prioritize based on okay. relevance, urgency, our goals. Sure. Could we design an AI that does something similar? A system that categorizes feedback based on its potential impact. I see. And allows the AI to focus on the most critical adjustments. So it's not just about having feedback. It's about having the right feedback exactly. at the right time. The right feedback at the right time. Yeah. And this this makes me think about how we as humans tackle big tasks. Yeah. We don't try to do everything at once. Right. We break things down right. into smaller, more manageable pieces. That's a perfect segue oh, into good. hierarchical reinforcement learning okay. or HRL. Okay. And that's a way of doing just that for AI. Oh, yeah? It's like giving the AI a yeah. set of sub goals, okay, each yeah. with its own reward system. Okay. So let's say yeah. we're training an AI to play a complex strategy game. Okay. Instead of trying to master the entire game at once, uh -huh. we can use HRL to train it. Got it. On individual tactics. Yeah, First, sure. like resource management or unit control. Okay. And then all of those skills can be combined and refined so it's like learning to walk before you run. Exactly. You master the fundamentals. Right. And then you go on to the marathon. Perfect analogy. Then there's another approach, agent-based modeling. Yeah. Or ABM. Yes. And this one really fascinates me uh -huh. because it's all about distributed intelligence. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. ABM is about creating a system of independent agents that work together. Okay. Kind of like a colony of ants building an anthill. Wow. Each agent has its own set of rules and behaviors, yeah. but their collective interactions right. lead to this emergent intelligence. So like a symphony orchestra. There you go. Where each musician is playing their part. Perfect. But it all comes together magically exactly. under the direction of the conductor. That's a great analogy. But with all of these agents acting independently, yeah. how do we predict and control their behavior. Right. That's the challenge and the beauty of it. Okay. We're not trying to micromanage each agent. We're designing the system's communication and coordination mechanisms. Okay. So it's more like creating a marketplace. Uh-huh. We set the rules of trade. Got it. But we don't dictate what each individual buys and sells. So it's a decentralized approach. Exactly. Which allows for the adaptability and resilience. It does. Because there isn't a single point of failure. Precisely. Okay, so we've talked about feedback. Yeah. We've talked about breaking down tasks into these sub-goals uh -huh. and this idea of distributed intelligence with ABM. Right. But there's another piece of the puzzle that I think is crucial yeah. for building truly intelligent AI, and that is this idea of blending yes. the power of neural networks uh -huh. with the logic and reasoning of symbolic AI. This is a very exciting area, yeah. neurosymbolic AI. Yeah. Imagine an AI that can not only learn from data, 
Okay. But can also understand and apply logical rules. So not just recognizing patterns, right. but understanding meaning and so, context. Like learning the rules of grammar yeah. and then using that knowledge to understand the nuances of language. Wow. Or grasp complex scientific principles yeah. and use them to make predictions. So teaching the AI to think not just with data, yeah. but with meaning, with meaning and context. Right. So it's getting closer to how we as humans right. reason and understand the world. It is. And this is a huge step towards AI that can truly collaborate with us, wow. not just as tools, but as partners in problem solving. Yeah. But with all this complexity comes a need for transparency. Of course. Especially when we're talking about high stakes decisions. Absolutely. We need to be able to understand the reasoning. We need to be able to understand how it reached a particular conclusion. So it's like being able to audit the AI's thought process. Exactly. To see how it got there. That's a great way to put it. One of the approaches I've read about involves using knowledge graphs. Yes. It's sort of like creating a map of concepts and relationships. Right. Knowledge graphs provide structure and context. Okay. Allowing the AI to reason about the world in a more human-like way. So if we're developing an AI to assist doctors in diagnosing diseases. Right. A knowledge graph could contain information about symptoms and medical conditions. Exactly. All this information that the AI could then use to analyze patient data. That's right. And suggest potential diagnoses. It's like giving the AI a common sense framework, a way to connect the dots and understand the world in a more nuanced way. But even with all of this, yeah. we still have this challenge of enabling these systems yes. to learn and explore autonomously. Right. How do we give them that ability to discover new knowledge yeah. without constant human guidance? Right. And that's where I think self-supervised and curiosity-driven learning exact. come in. That's where it gets really interesting. So instead of passively absorbing information, yeah. it's actively seeking it out. Driven by its own internal curiosity. Like giving the AI a thirst for knowledge. That's a great way to put it. An insatiable desire to understand the world around it. So instead of just relying on labeled data right. provided by humans, yeah. it can potentially generate its own labels. Teaching itself, essentially. Exactly. But how do we make sure that all this curiosity doesn't lead the AI astray? Right. We, we don't want it going down these rabbit holes. Yeah, of irrelevant information. So think about a child's natural curiosity. Okay. You know, they explore their environment. Yeah. They ask endless questions. Right. They learn through trial and error. Yeah, but they're guided. But their exploration is guided. Right, by their parents and their environment. By their environment and their caregivers. Exactly. And similarly, we can design AI systems yeah. that channel that curiosity okay. towards more beneficial areas. So striking a balance yeah. between letting the AI explore, right. but giving it some guardrails exactly. to keep it on track. That's a great way to think about it. This brings us to graph neural networks. Or GNNs. Ah, GNNs, yeah. a powerful tool for analyzing data yeah. that's structured as a network. Okay. So think about social networks, wow. financial transactions, wow. or even the interactions between molecules in a chemical reaction. Wow. GNNs allow AI to understand yeah. not just individual data points, but the complex web of relationships between them. So it's like the difference between looking at a list of ingredients cool. and watching a recipe come to life. That's a great analogy. But our world is dynamic, right? It is. These relationships are constantly evolving. That's right. So how do we capture that element of time right. and space? So that's where the idea of a spatio-temporal framework comes in. Okay. It's like adding a time-lapse dimension okay. to those network maps. Got it. So let's say we're tracking the spread of a virus. Okay. A traditional GNN might sh show us the oh. connections between infected individuals at a single point in time. Right. But a spatio-temporal GNN could track those connections over time. Wow. Revealing how the virus is moving, mutating, adapting to I... different environments. But with all of that data flowing in, right. how do we help the AI focus on the changes that really matter? Right. So one approach is to use graph embeddings. Yeah. Think of it like creating a condensed version of that complex network map, right. highlighting the most significant features. So like summarizing a dense research paper exactly. into oh. a concise abstract. That's a great way to put it. Without losing the essence. Right. Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. Feedback loops. Yeah. Hierarchical learning. Mm -hmm. Neurosymbolic AI. Right. Curiosity driven. Right. Learning. 
these powerful GNNs. Powerful tools. It feels like we're building towards an AI that's not just intelligent, yeah. but adaptable, uh -huh. insightful, yeah. and able to tackle those problems that have stumped us for years. But there's one more frontier, I think, that holds immense potential. And that's quantum computing. Quantum computing. It still feels a bit like science fiction. Yeah. But the possibilities for AI are truly mind boggling. I've heard whispers about it. Yeah. But it always seems so abstract. Right. How would it actually enhance AI? So imagine a computer yeah. that operates on the principles of quantum mechanics. Okay. Able to explore countless possibilities simultaneously. Wow. It's like having a team of millions of experts, okay. each exploring a different solution path all at the same time. That's incredible. That's the power of quantum computing. What kind of problems could it solve right. that are currently beyond our reach? So take optimization problems, for example. Okay. Trying to find the most efficient route for a fleet of delivery trucks. Right or the optimal configuration for a complex financial portfolio. Yeah. These are problems with countless possible solutions. Right. And even our most powerful classical computers struggle to find the absolute best answer. So it's like upgrading from a horse-drawn carriage to a supersonic jet. That's a good analogy. But beyond just speed, yes. isn't there something about quantum computing's probabilistic nature yes. that aligns well with how humans think? Exactly. Our world is full of uncertainty, uh -huh. ambiguity. Yeah. We make decisions based on incomplete information. Right. We're constantly adjusting our strategies as new information emerges. Yeah. Quantum computing's ability to handle probabilities okay. could allow AI to reason and adapt in a more human-like way. So giving the AI a sense of intuition. Almost like giving it a sense of intuition. An ability to make judgments yes. and navigate uncertainty more like we do. That's right. But I imagine integrating quantum learning into AI systems yeah. is incredibly challenging. It's still early days. Yeah. We're still figuring out the best ways to represent data right. design algorithms for these quantum systems. It's like trying to write a symphony for an orchestra of instruments Yay. we've never heard before. That's a great way to put it. So we've got feedback loops hierarchical learning, right. this fascinating blend of neural and symbolic AI, yes. curiosity-driven exploration, uh -huh. powerful graph neural networks, right. and now this mind-bending potential of quantum computing. And it all comes back to this idea of... It feels like we're piecing together the blueprint for truly intelligent AI. A chain of thought AI that we talked yeah. about at the beginning, a system yeah. that can not only solve problems, uh -huh but can do so in a way that's creative, insightful. So like having an AI partner that can yeah. not only crunch the numbers, but help us understand the Title bigger lists. picture and explore new possibilities. It can help us make decisions oh, that yeah. benefit all of humanity. But creativity and innovation, right? those are slippery concepts. They are. Even for us humans, yeah. even for us, how do we define them right. in the context of AI? What does it mean for an AI to be truly creative? Yeah. That's a great question. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? I think it goes beyond just generating novel outputs. Right. It's about understanding the context, uh -huh. the constraints, the goals, yes, and then coming up with solutions that are both original and effective. So it's that aha moment right. when you suddenly see a problem from a new angle. It's like having that breakthrough. Exactly. Where a brilliant solution just emerges. It's purposeful creativity, yeah. the kind that leads to breakthroughs. And to cultivate that in AI, yeah. I think we need to expose these systems yes. to a rich and diverse set of experiences. A rich and diverse set of experiences. Yeah, feed them data from all sorts of domains. That's right. Art, music, literature. Give them a well-rounded education. Science history. Exactly. Let them see the world through multiple lenses. Through multiple lenses. But it's not just about input. It's not just about input. Right. It's about giving them the tools. We also need to provide the AI with tools that encourage experimentation. That encourage experimentation. Yeah, give it the freedom to play, to try new things, yes. to make mistakes, and learn from them. And that's where feedback comes in again. Right. So not just feedback on whether a solution is right or wrong. Not just right or wrong. But feedback on its originality. On its originality. On its elegance. Its potential impact. Its potential impact, exactly. It's like having a mentor. 
It is like having a mentor. They guide the AI's creative development. They're guiding its creative development. To help it refine its ideas yes. and find its own unique voice. Its own unique voice. So we're teaching the AI to think outside the box. Yes. To challenge assumptions. To challenge us. And come up with solutions that we might never have imagined. That we might never have imagined. But even with all of that, we still have the challenge of communication. Communication, of course. Right. If AI is going to be our partner in problem solving. We need to be able to understand each other. That's the crux of it. And human communication is so nuanced, so layered. Human communication is so nuanced. With meaning. It's not just about exchanging words. Yeah. It's about understanding intentions, emotions, right. social it's, context. It's about understanding all of the unspoken things. All the unspoken things. Will go along with communication. How do we teach an AI to navigate that complexity? It feels like it starts with transparency. I think it does. Right. Oh. If we can understand how the AI is thinking, mm -hmm. how it's making decisions, yeah. what its motivations are, yes. then we can start to build trust Absolutely. and have a more meaningful dialogue. That requires developing new interfaces, yeah. new ways of interacting with AI that go beyond right. just typing commands or reading outputs. Imagine being able to have a conversation with yeah, an AI. Imagine having a conversation with an AI. As naturally as you would with another human. As naturally as you would with another human being. Brainstorming ideas. Brainstorming ideas. Debating different approaches. Debating different approaches. Working collaboratively towards a shared goal. Working collaboratively towards a shared goal. That's the dream. That is the dream. To have an AI as a true partner. A true partner in our endeavor. In all of our endeavors. That can augment our abilities. Yeah. Help us achieve things we never thought possible. But we also need to be mindful of, course. of potential risks. As with any powerful technology, yeah. there are ethical considerations. We need to make sure that AI is used for good. We do. Not for harm. We need to be aware of potential biases. Right. We need to guard against unintended consequences. So we need to be aware of potential biases. Right. We need to guard against unintended consequences. So being responsible stewards. The responsible stewards. Of this technology. So shaping its development and deployment. Shaping its development and deployment. In a way that benefits all of humanity. In a way that benefits all of humanity. That's a tall order. It is a tall order. But I think it's a challenge we must embrace. The future of AI is intertwined with the future of humanity. It is. It's up to us to shape that future. It is up to us. To guide it towards a world where AI empowers us. It empowers us. Inspires us. It inspires us. And helps us create a more just and sustainable society. A more just and sustainable society. For all. For all. We're going to be talking about something called a chain of thought agentic system. Sounds kind of complicated, right? It is pretty complex, but it's also super fascinating. Definitely. So basically, we're talking about AI, but not just any AI. Right. It's not just about making a calculator that can do math problems faster. It's about an AI that can actually think for itself, like plan things out, right. strategize, and maybe even innovate. Exactly. We're talking about higher order thinking, pushing the limits of what we thought AI could do. And the crazy thing is, this isn't just some far off sci-fi concept. Nope, this is happening right now, and it has the potential to totally revolutionize all kinds of fields. Oh yeah, like medicine, finance, maybe even self-driving cars. Yeah. The possibilities are pretty mind-blowing. Absolutely. But to build something like this, we need to start thinking about AI design in a whole new way. So how do we even begin to build an AI that can learn and adapt on its own? Well, one of the key elements is continuous refinement through feedback. So it's not just a matter of programming it once and letting it run. Not at all. We need to build in a system that can constantly learn and adapt based on new information. Kind of like how we humans learn from our experiences and adjust our behavior. Exactly. Think of it like this. We need to give AI the ability to reflect on its own actions and decisions and then make adjustments based on what it learns. Hold on. Are we talking about giving AI a conscience? Can it actually think about its own thoughts? Not exactly. It's more about simulating those self-reflective processes through algorithms. So more like a self-tuning system that constantly monitors its own performance and makes adjustments as needed. You got it. It's about building in feedback loops that can monitor both internal performance and external input and then use that information to improve. Okay, that makes sense. But managing all that feedback sounds like a logistical nightmare. It definitely presents some challenges. We need to design systems that can filter information for relevance and prioritize different types of feedback. Otherwise, the system could get totally overwhelmed, right? Exactly. We don't want feedback creating processing bottlenecks. 
Okay, so I get the concept, but I need a real world example. Mm -hmm. How would this work in something like medical diagnostics? Let's imagine an AI system that helps doctors diagnose patients. Okay, so it's analyzing patient data, looking for patterns, and helping doctors make more accurate diagnoses. Right, but it also needs to be able to incorporate feedback from both patients and doctors. So like if a patient reports that a certain treatment isn't working, or if a doctor notices a trend in misdiagnoses, the AI can take that information and adjust its algorithms accordingly. Precisely. It's about balancing user feedback with performance metrics and using both to improve the system. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. But how do we even begin to program an AI that can handle that level of complexity? Well, one approach is to use something called hierarchical reinforcement learning, or HRL. Okay, break that down for me. What is HRL? Basically, it's a way of breaking down complex tasks into smaller, more manageable sub-goals. So instead of trying to teach the AI to solve a huge problem all at once, we break it down into smaller steps. Exactly. It's kind of like how we humans learn. We don't tackle complex problems all at once. We break them down into manageable steps. Makes sense. But how do we make sure all those sub-goals are working together towards the main objective? How do we keep them from pulling in different directions? That's a great question. And it's where the concept of reward structures comes into play. Reward structures. Yeah. Basically, we need to carefully design the rewards for each sub-goal to ensure they're incentivizing behavior that aligns with the main objective. So it's like training a dog with treats. We reward the AI for taking actions that lead to the desired outcome. It's similar to that. We need to set up the right incentives to guide the AI's learning process. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. But I'd love to hear a real-world example. How would this work with something like self-driving cars? Okay, so let's say the main objective is to get passengers from point A to point B safely, right? Right, that's the ultimate goal of any self-driving car system. Exactly. But to achieve that goal, the AI needs to master a bunch of smaller sub-goals. Like staying in its lane, avoiding obstacles, obeying traffic laws, all that stuff. Exactly. And HRL can help the AI prioritize those subtasks while still keeping the bigger picture in mind. So even if the car needs to make a sudden maneuver to avoid an accident, it's still operating within the framework of that overarching goal of safety. Precisely. It's a lot like how our own brains work constantly juggling multiple tasks while staying focused on the bigger picture. Wow, this is starting to sound very brain-like indeed. Mm -hmm. We're talking about creating a digital brain here. It's an interesting analogy, and in some ways, yes. This brings us to another fascinating concept, agent-based modeling or ABM. Okay, hit me with it. What's ABM all about? Imagine a system of independent modular agents, each responsible for a specific part of the task. So instead of one giant AI brain, we have a bunch of smaller AI brains working together. You got it. It's like a team of specialists, each with their own expertise, but working together to solve a larger problem. That's a really cool concept. So these agents are learning and adapting independently, but also sharing information with each other. Exactly. And this approach has a lot of advantages. For one thing, it creates a more resilient system because it's not reliant on a single point of failure. Right. So if one agent malfunctions, the others can pick up the slack. Exactly. It's like having a backup generator. It also allows the system to adapt more quickly to new situations. Because each agent can adjust its behavior based on its own local environment. Precisely. It's a much more flexible and dynamic approach than traditional AI models. Okay, I'm really liking this ABM concept. But wouldn't coordinating all these agents be incredibly difficult? I mean, how do you prevent communication lags or make sure the system works reliably? Those are definitely challenges we need to address. We need to design efficient communication frameworks that allow agents to interact without overloading the system. So it's like figuring out the optimal communication channels for a large organization. Exactly. And we need to make sure those channels are secure and reliable. Okay, so communication is key. But how do we actually apply this ABM concept to real-world problems? Well, one really interesting application is in managing energy grids. Energy grids. How does that work? Imagine each node in the grid acting as an independent agent. So each node is monitoring its own local conditions and making decisions about energy distribution. Exactly. And by communicating with each other, these agents can balance the load across the entire grid, ensuring a stable and reliable supply of energy. That's pretty amazing. So each node is acting like a mini power plant, making decisions based on real-time data and coordinating with other nodes to keep the whole system running smoothly. You got it. It's a perfect example of how AVM can be used to create a more decentralized and resilient infrastructure. This is all incredibly impressive. 
but I can't help but wonder, how do we make sure these AI systems are making decisions that align with our values? That's a crucial question, and it brings us to the realm of neurosymbolic AI. Neurosymbolic AI. Okay, break that down for me. Imagine an AI that can not only learn from data, but also apply logical rules and reasoning to its decision-making process. So it's not just about recognizing patterns, but also about understanding why certain patterns are meaningful. Exactly. It's about integrating structured reasoning into neural networks. Okay, so it's like giving the AI a set of guidelines or principles to follow when making decisions. In a way, yes. We're trying to build AI systems that can understand not just what is happening, but also why it's happening and what the implications are. That makes sense. But wouldn't all that logical reasoning slow things down, especially in situations where split-second decisions are needed? That's definitely a challenge we need to address. We need to find ways to integrate symbolic reasoning without sacrificing performance. So it's a balancing act between transparency and efficiency. Exactly. And finding that sweet spot is one of the key goals of neurosymbolic AI research. Okay, so we've covered feedback systems, hierarchical learning agent-based modeling, and now neurosymbolic AI. My brain is starting to hurt a little, but in a good way. I know it's a lot to take in, yeah. but we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with this new generation of AI. And trust me, it gets even more mind-blowing from here. Well, I'm definitely intrigued to hear more, but I think we've covered enough ground for today. We'll have to save the rest for our next deep dive. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be sure to tune in next time for part two of our exploration into the world of chain of thought agentic AI systems. See you then. So we've talked about giving AI the ability to reflect on its own actions, make adjustments, and learn from its experiences. It's like building a system that's constantly evaluating its own performance and looking for ways to improve. Yeah, we talked about that in the last part. It's like giving AI a feedback loop, right? Exactly. But it's not just about receiving feedback. It's about understanding that feedback, prioritizing it, and then using it to make strategic adjustments. Think about how a human might reflect on their goals and decide to change course based on what they've learned. So it's not just about reacting to feedback. It's about actually thinking about it and using it to make informed decisions about the future. Right. It's about simulating that higher level thinking process in an AI system. Okay, but how do we actually do that? How do we program an AI to think strategically like that? Well, one approach is to use algorithms that can monitor internal performance metrics and compare them to external feedback. It's about creating a system that can assess its own effectiveness and identify areas for improvement. Okay, so it's not about giving the AI a conscience or anything like that. It's about building in mechanisms that allow it to analyze its own performance and make adjustments based on data. Precisely. And this feedback loop can be multi-layered, incorporating different types of input and prioritizing them based on context. For example, in a medical diagnosis system, patient feedback might be given higher priority during interactions, while clinical performance data would be more important for back-end diagnostics. Right. So the AI is constantly learning and adapting based on different types of feedback. But how do we make sure all that feedback doesn't overwhelm the system? That's where careful design comes in. We need to create systems that can filter information for relevance and ensure that feedback is incorporated efficiently without creating processing bottlenecks. Right. We don't want the AI getting bogged down in a sea of data. It needs to be able to focus on the most important information. Exactly. And that brings us back to the concept of hierarchical reinforcement learning, or HRL. Remember how we talked about breaking down complex tasks into smaller, more manageable sub-goals? Yeah, it's like teaching the AI to solve a puzzle by first mastering the individual pieces. Right. And by dividing a task into smaller components, we can create a more structured learning process. This makes it easier for the AI to track its progress, make adjustments, and incorporate feedback at each stage. Okay, I'm following you. But how do we ensure that those smaller pieces are all working together towards the same overarching goal? That's where reward structures come into play. We need to carefully design the rewards for each sub-goal to ensure they incentivize behavior that aligns with the main objective. So it's like setting up a system of incentives to guide the AI's learning. Precisely. And these reward structures can be dynamic, adjusting as the AI learns and encounters new situations. This is all starting to sound eerily similar to how our own brains work. Are we essentially trying to reverse engineer the human brain here? Well, we're certainly drawing inspiration from how the brain learns and adapts, but we're not trying to create an exact replica. It's more about understanding the principles of biological intelligence and applying them to artificial systems. So it's about taking what we know 
about how humans learn and using that to design more effective AI systems. Exactly. And one of the key principles we're exploring is the concept of distributed intelligence, where multiple independent agents work together to solve a problem. We touched on this earlier with agent-based modeling, or ABM. Right. ABM, it's all about simulating complex systems with emergent behavior. I love that concept. It's a powerful tool, and emergent behavior is one of the most fascinating aspects of complex systems. It refers to those patterns and behaviors that arise from the interactions of individual agents, even though those behaviors aren't explicitly programmed into the system. It's like magic. You have all these individual parts doing their own thing, but somehow their interactions create something totally new and unexpected. Exactly. Think of a flock of birds flying in formation. Each bird is acting independently, but their collective behavior creates this beautiful, synchronized pattern. Or think about an ant colony. Right. Each ant has its own simple set of rules, mm -hmm. but together they can build these incredible structures and accomplish amazing feats. It's like the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Precisely. And we see emergent behavior in all sorts of complex systems, from ecosystems to economies to social networks. It's like each individual part is playing a role in the overall behavior of the system, even if they're not consciously aware of it. Exactly. And by understanding the principles of emergent behavior, we can design more robust and adaptable AI systems. Systems that can handle unexpected situations, learn from their mistakes, and evolve over time. Okay, but coordinating all those independent agents sounds incredibly difficult. How do we ensure they actually work together effectively? It's definitely a challenge, and communication is key. We need to develop mechanisms for communication and coordination between agents, almost like creating a language that allows them to share information and work towards a common goal. So it's like creating a society of AI. Each agent has its own role to play, but they're all working together for the greater good of the system. You got it. And this language can be both explicit through direct communication channels and implicit through the interactions of the agents themselves. This is all starting to feel very futuristic. Yeah. Are we talking about creating AI systems that can think and act like swarms of intelligent beings. Well, it's important to remember that these are still computer programs, not conscious entities. We're simulating collective intelligence, not creating actual sentience. Right, but the possibilities are still pretty mind-blowing. They are. And one of the key advantages of this approach is that it allows us to create systems that are more resilient and adaptable than traditional AI models. If one agent fails, the others can pick up the slack. And because each agent is learning and adapting independently, the system as a whole can evolve much more quickly. Resilient, adaptable. Yeah. Those are definitely qualities we could use more of in our technology as especially with everything changing so rapidly these days. Absolutely. They're essential for AI systems that will be operating in complex and ever-changing environments. And that brings us to another important consideration, transparency. How do we make sure these AI systems are making decisions that we understand and agree with? Right. Transparency is huge, especially as AI becomes more powerful and starts making decisions that impact our lives in a big way. We need to be able to trust these systems. Exactly. And that's where new symbolic AI comes in. It's an approach that aims to integrate symbolic reasoning into neural networks, combining the power of data-driven learning with the clarity and logic of rule-based systems. So we're talking about combining the flexibility of neural networks with the transparency and explainability of symbolic systems. Precisely. By integrating these two approaches, we can create systems that are both powerful and interpretable. So. It's not just about the AI making the right decision. It's also about us being able to understand why it made that decision. Exactly. And this is particularly important in high stakes domains like healthcare or finance, where transparency and accountability are essential. We need to be able to trace the AI's reasoning process and understand how it arrived at a particular decision. Okay, but wouldn't adding this layer of symbolic reasoning slow things down? especially in situations where rapid responses are required. Like if we're talking about an AI controlling a self-driving car, mm -hmm. those decisions need to be made in a split second. That's a valid concern. And it's one of the key challenges in developing neurosymbolic AI systems. We need to find ways to integrate symbolic reasoning without sacrificing performance. It's a balancing act. So it's about finding that sweet spot between transparency and efficiency. Exactly, and that's an ongoing area of research. But it's a challenge we need to overcome if we want to build AI systems that we can truly trust. Speaking of challenges, I'm curious about how we even teach an AI to learn independently. Is that even possible? It is, and it's one of the most exciting areas of AI research right now. 
One approach is self-supervised learning, where the AI learns to label unstructured data independently, essentially teaching itself. Wait a minute. The AI can teach itself. That sounds amazing, but also a little scary. What if the AI misinterprets patterns in the data and starts learning the wrong things? That's a valid concern. And that's why we need to build in safeguards like periodic checks and validation mechanisms to ensure the AI is learning correctly. So it's not just about letting the AI run wild. We need to supervise its learning process, even if it's self-directed, like a teacher who gives their students some freedom, but still checks in to make sure they're on the right track. Exactly. It's about finding the right balance between guidance and autonomy. And to further enhance learning, we can also introduce curiosity-driven learning. Curiosity-driven learning. Now that sounds intriguing. What's that all about? Think of it like giving the AI a sense of intrinsic motivation to explore and discover new things. It's like an AI scientist constantly experimenting and trying to understand the world around it. It's particularly useful in situations where explicit rewards are scarce, encouraging the AI to be more proactive in its learning. So instead of passively receiving information, the AI is actively seeking it out. It's like a little kid constantly asking why and how. Exactly. But of course, we don't want the AI going off on tangents and exploring things that are completely irrelevant to its goals. So we need to develop mechanisms to control the scope of its curiosity, keeping it focused on relevant areas while still allowing for some degree of exploration. It's like raising a curious child. You want them to explore and learn, but you also want to make sure they're not getting into too much trouble. A perfect analogy. And finding that balance between exploration and focus is crucial for developing AI systems that are both curious and effective. Okay, so we've covered feedback systems, hierarchical learning, agent-based modeling, neurosymbolic AI, self-supervised learning, and now curiosity-driven learning. What other key concepts should we explore? Well, we've talked a lot about the technical aspects of building these advanced AI systems, but we haven't really touched on the importance of context in AI decision making. Context. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, we humans rely heavily on context to make decisions. We don't just process information in a vacuum. We consider the situation, the environment, the people involved. All of that plays a role in how we interpret information and make choices. Exactly. And if we want to build AI systems that can truly understand and interact with the world in a meaningful way, we need to teach them to do the same. So we need to move beyond just processing data to actually understanding the meaning behind the data. Kind of like how we humans interpret information based on our experiences and understanding of the world. Exactly. And that requires taking into account factors like time, location, social norms, individual preferences, all those subtle cues that shape our understanding of a situation. It's about building AI that's not just intelligent, but also sensitive to the nuances of human interaction. So we're not just trying to build a brain in a box, but something that can understand the world in a more human-like way. Precisely. And that brings up another crucial consideration, ethics. If we're building AI systems that are going to interact with humans in increasingly complex ways, we need to make sure those systems are aligned with our values. We need to build AI that is not only intelligent, but also ethical and trustworthy. Ethical and trustworthy AI. Those yeah. are certainly qualities we need more of in the world today, especially as technology becomes more and more integrated into our lives. Absolutely. And that's not something that's going to happen by accident. It requires careful consideration, planning, and collaboration. We need to think about the values and principles that we want to embed in these systems from the very beginning. So how do we actually go about building ethical and trustworthy AI? What are some of the key things we need to consider? Well, for starters, we need to ensure that AI systems are fair and unbiased. This means designing algorithms that don't discriminate against individuals or groups based on factors like race, gender, or socioeconomic status. So it's not just about the technical aspects of AI, but also about the social and ethical implications. Exactly. We need to be mindful of the data that we use to train AI systems and ensure that it represents the diversity of human experience. Because if we train AI on biased data, it's going to learn those biases and perpetuate them. Right. Like that old saying, garbage in, garbage out. If we feed the AI bad data, we're going to get bad results. Exactly. And data bias is just one of the many ethical challenges we need to address. We also need to consider the potential impact of AI on employment. Right. That's a big one. A lot of people are worried that AI is going to automate jobs and lead to widespread unemployment. It's certainly a possibility. But it's not inevitable. We need to think about how to create AI systems that complement human skills rather than replace them. 
It's about finding ways for humans and AI to work together effectively, leveraging the strengths of both. So instead of seeing AI as a threat, we should see it as an opportunity to create new jobs and enhance human capabilities. Exactly. And that requires investing in education and training programs that prepare people for the jobs of the future. We need to make sure that everyone has the skills they need to thrive in a world where AI is increasingly prevalent. Okay, so fairness, bias, and employment are all important considerations. What else should we be thinking about? While we also need to consider the potential for AI to be used for malicious purposes. Okay, now we're getting into some scary territory. What kind of malicious purposes are we talking about? Well, AI could be used to create autonomous weapon systems that could operate without human oversight, making decisions about life and death without any ethical or moral guidance. That's a terrifying thought. It sounds like something out of a science fiction dystopia. It does, but it's a very real concern, and it's one that we need to address proactively. We need to establish international agreements and regulations to prevent the development of such weapons and ensure that AI is used for peaceful purposes. So it's not just about the technology itself, but about the ethical framework that governs its development and use. Precisely. We need to be mindful of the potential dangers of AI while also fostering responsible innovation. It's a delicate balance, but one that's essential for ensuring a future where AI benefits humanity. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground here. We've talked about the need for fairness, transparency, accountability, and ethical oversight in AI development. It's clear that we're dealing with a powerful force here, one that has the potential to reshape our world in profound ways. Mm -hmm. What else should we be thinking about as we navigate this rapidly evolving landscape? We also need to think about privacy. In the age of big data, AI systems are often trained on vast amounts of information, including personal data like our browsing history, our location data, and even our social media posts. Right. Privacy is a huge concern these days. It seems like everywhere we turn, someone is collecting our data. How does AI factor into all of this? Well, there's a risk that our personal data could be used to train AI systems without our knowledge or consent. And that's something we need to address. We need to establish clear guidelines and regulations for data privacy in the age of AI, ensuring that individuals have control over their own data and that it's used responsibly. So it's about finding the right balance between innovation and protecting individual rights. Exactly. And that requires a collaborative effort between technologists, policymakers, and the public. We all have a role to play in shaping the future of AI. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation. We've explored the technical advancements in AI, the ethical challenges they present, and the need for responsible development and governance. It's clear that AI is a powerful force, one that has the potential to reshape our world in profound ways. So where do we go from here? It's been a fascinating discussion. And you're right, we're at a pivotal moment. It's clear that we're on the cusp of a new era of intelligence, one that has the potential to reshape our world in profound ways. It's both exciting and a little bit terrifying to think about the possibilities. I agree. It's a powerful technology, and with great power comes great responsibility. It's crucial that we approach this new era with both enthusiasm and caution. We need to embrace the potential of AI while also being mindful of the risks. Well said. So on that note, let's shift gears a bit and explore some of the potential applications of these advanced AI systems and how they could transform various industries. Ready to dive into some real world examples. Absolutely, let's explore how these technologies could revolutionize everything from healthcare and finance to transportation and entertainment. Okay, so we've talked about all the amazing things this chain of thought agentic AI can do, but where are we actually gonna see this technology in action? like in the real world. Well, get ready, because we're about to take a trip through the future. AI is about to touch pretty much every industry you can think of. Ooh, I love a good trip to the future. Let's start with something everyone cares about healthcare. Perfect. Imagine an AI that's like a superhero for doctors. It can look at medical images like x-rays and MRIs and spot tiny little signs of disease that even the best human eye might miss. So we're talking early detection, which can be life-saving for so many conditions. Exactly. And it goes even further. This AI could create personalized treatment plans for each patient. Wait, really? How does that work? It would analyze your genes, your lifestyle, your medical history, everything. And then it would recommend the best treatment just for you. Wow, that's amazing. It's like having a team of expert doctors creating a custom plan just for you. It's incredible. Okay, what about something a little more, well, Wall Street-y, like... Finance. A lot of people are worried AI is going to take over the stock market. AI is already a big player in finance, but this new kind of AI could totally change the game. Imagine an AI that understands the market better than any human could. 
It can analyze trends, assess risks, make lightning fast trades. So it's not just about being fast, it's about being smart, right? Like yeah. this AI could actually understand the complexities of the financial markets and make strategic decisions. Exactly. It could help investors avoid risky moves, spot new opportunities. It could even level the playing field for everyday investors. Hmm. That's mm -hmm. an interesting thought. Okay. Enough about money. Let's talk about something a little more practical, like yeah. getting around. What about transportation? Ooh, buckle up. We already have self-driving cars, but this is next level stuff. Imagine a world where traffic flows perfectly because AI is managing everything. It's optimizing routes, predicting accidents. Wait, so you're telling me no more traffic jams? Think about it. AI could coordinate all the cars on the road, making sure everyone gets where they need to go quickly and safely. Now that's a future I can get behind. What about <laughs> public transport? Even better. Buses and trains that run exactly when and where people need them. No more waiting around for ages. Okay, so we've got healthcare, finance, transportation all figured out. But what about the stuff that makes life worth living, like art and music? Can AI really be creative? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? AI is already making music, composing art, even writing stories. But here's the thing. I think the real magic happens when AI and humans team up. So it's not about AI replacing artists. It's about AI helping artists do even more amazing things. Exactly. AI can be a tool for creativity, helping artists explore new ideas and push boundaries. That's a much more hopeful vision. Okay, so healthcare, finance, transportation, and art. What else is on the AI hit list? Education. This is a big one. Imagine every student having their own personal AI tutor that knows exactly how they learn best and can adjust the lessons to keep them engaged. So no more boring lectures or one-size-fits-all teaching. Every student gets exactly what they need to succeed. Right. And teachers could finally get rid of all that paperwork and spend more time actually teaching. It's a win-win. Okay, education revolutionized. What's next? Manufacturing. Think smart factories where robots and AI work side by side to design, build, and test products. It's like a super efficient ballet of machines and intelligence. So factories that are not only more efficient, but also safer for the workers. Exactly. And because AI can learn and adapt, these factories can constantly improve, getting better and better over time. Wow. Sounds like AI is going to reshape our world in ways we can't even imagine yet. It definitely will. But it's not just about the technology itself. It's about how we use it. It's about making sure AI benefits everyone and helps create a better future for all of us. That's a powerful thought. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one thing you want our listeners to take away from this conversation? That the future of AI is not something that just happens to us. It's something we're all creating together. So it's not about being afraid of AI. It's about being informed and engaged. Exactly. The more we understand about AI, the better equipped we'll be to shape its development and use it for good. Well said. This has been an incredible journey into the world of AI, and I have to say I'm both excited and a little terrified by what the future holds. I get it. It's a lot to process. But it's important to remember that we're not just passive observers in this technological revolution. We all have a role to play. So to our listeners out there, stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay engaged. The future of AI is in our hands. Let's make it a future we can all be proud of. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure having you. And to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of chain of thought, agentic AI.